more of kind of the the strategy side. You were talking about like doing the all star um, all star campaign, which was insane. I saw it uh, the other day, but I appreciate um, that. But uh, so so going through something like that, like one of the things that I've worked with, you know, anyone who's been on my team, anyone, you know, interns and, and up, like helping them understand like what goes into, okay, we have this idea all the way to, okay, we've now posted this to the world, but all of those steps in between are what make or break that idea. So maybe, I mean, like you could use that project as, as an example, or just in general, really like your process from like, here's an idea to, all right, let's post this on Instagram and, and get the word out. Yeah. So um, this is something I'm still learning and I've grown more confident in just because this is probably my, my, my third, I guess, spot you can say um, in terms of like going through this whole process. So um, the way we go about it, go about it here at the Nets is um, for example, I use the all-star campaign. Like we say, Hey, look, like our marketing team, my boss, my head boss, Charlie Widows, he's great. Um, they come to us and they say, Hey, look, we, we need to create something for our all-star this year, um, our all-star campaign this year. Um, so for this year, it was like the Indy 500 um, and things like that. So, um, the first thing I always try to do is I'm going to create like a, like a brief and a treatment. Um, but like throughout the process of I'm thinking like one of the things that we really harp on, um, and one of the things that I've really learned here in terms of like strategy and things like that, um, is how do you make your content represent like the area that you're in? Um, so for example, like in Brooklyn, like it's not like flashy, like LA or it's not, um, I guess like it's it's just not the same feel as it was in Phoenix. Like that's one of the things I learned early on was like what I do here is like it's not gonna work um from what I did in Phoenix. Like it's two different vibes. Like Brooklyn's more authentic, it's more black and white, like it's more real. Um so always just like everything I do, I always try to have that in mind. Like, how do I make this feel um in Brooklyn? So like for our open videos, I guess you could say like we did like a subway inspired set and our city edition was cause. Um and so like how do I make these two videos feel that when you walk in, like, and you walk into the arena as they, as they play, like, how does this, like, I want, like, our fans to walk in and be like, oh, wow, this is Brooklyn. Like, you can't do this and you can't see this, like, anywhere else. Um, and so, like, I always try to think about that um, in the process of, like, creating these treatments. Um, how does it reflect, like, the area that I'm in? Um, so we start off with that. And then a lot of the work, and, like, my guy, Matt Flores, like, he's really harped on this, is, like, 90% of the work is really pre-production. Um, so it's location scouting. Like, we... We location scouted like all those places. Um, it's, you know, a lot of it is just like big time producing. Like for that video, like the, the two producers on the video, like Sydney, Sydney Zabo um, and uh, Adion Igbavoa. Um, I apologize if I mess up her name, but um, they were great. Like, like talent wardrobe, like getting everything we need, like building out a crew sheet. It's like all that stuff, like all of it is built in like pre-production. So like you have your treatment, you have your pre-production, um and then um, for me like i was the one that directed the video like i'm creating like this storyboard so that when we go into it like i know like these are the shots that i need um this is what we're going to follow like throughout the day um so that when it came to the actual day like we didn't really have any hiccups except for like the car like stopping every 20 minutes um and a lot of that i would say like like my guy matt flores like he he harps on it like as long as we get this done in pre-production like we'll be able to control a lot of the variables like on the actual shoot day um so with all that being said like it was like a three-week process um and then i edited the video in like four days which is like kind of crazy i guess um but like that's how like the, the process i guess and like how i approach these things um obviously like, i'm still learning like if you took the way i did the open videos and you, the way i did the all-star campaign like it's like for me at least like it's night and day because like i'll admit it like i was struggling like throughout that process and like i said like i've always had people to lean on so um like going now into the all-star campaign like i was i had a lot more confidence going into this um but yeah i guess like that that's what i would say with the process would be like a lot of it is pre-production um so that when you come to your actual shoot dates um like it's a lot easier and if you look at the storyboard like and you look at the final video like it's almost the same like there's just some small tinkering that i did um but yeah a lot of it was in pre-production and um i guess that's something that i really look to um, nail in when I do like these certain projects. For sure. And, and I mean, it, it makes sense. Like that's what you just said. Basically it, it's the same thing that we do like social and strategy and things. It's like, you know, 
I always call it organized chaos is like, just like you said, in the pre-production stage, like you are planning everything that you can plan so that when something goes differently than you think in the moment, you can react. Like you already have that mind, you know, mind space, that brain capacity to be able to be like, all right, well, everything else is taken care of. Like, let's focus on this one little thing. We'll figure it out and we'll move forward. Right. Yeah. Like you're always going to have things that change like in a shoot, like for example, I didn't think the car was going to like shut down every 20 minutes. Like it's an old car. Right. So like we have a funny at GTO, like I didn't know the car was going to break down like every 20 minutes. Um, but I think like, if like coming out of that, it's like, that's like the one variable that um, like you have to like figure out on the fly. Like um, I would say you've done like a pretty good, pretty good job in pre-production. Like talking to like these people, like you're working with sound ops, you're working with different types of DPs. Like you ask them like, has a shoot ever gone smoothly? Um, they'll like, they'll tell you no. Like, so like, it's just like all, all it really comes down to is just like um, controlling the variable, controlling as many variables as you can. Like something's always inevitably going to go wrong. Um, but as long as you can prepare yourself in a way to where it's like, you go into these shoots knowing that you have a sort of idea of like what needs to be done. Like you'll always be um, in a good spot. For sure. One, well, and you brought up a good point and, and something that like, when I went from the Steelers to the Cardinals, it was like, okay, it's the same sport. It's, you know, I know everything that's going to happen. My first year with the Cardinals, it was like, I'm just going to do everything I had planned for the Steelers with the Cardinals. And it, it didn't work. Cause it's like, yeah, just like you said, it's two different vibes. It's two different fan bases. Like, yes, they're all football fans. And just like you said, with the Suns, with the Nets, it's like, they're all basketball fans, but they're, they couldn't be more polar opposite of, of, the type of people and the content that they're looking for and things like that. So when you, when you got to Brooklyn and realized like, okay, like some of the stuff that I'm doing in Phoenix, isn't going to work. How did you go about like doing the research on like, like you said, like understanding what the Brooklyn fans are looking for that. So that can be reflected yeah. in the stuff you're doing. Yeah. I think a big part of it is just understanding like the area that you're in. So again, shout out my guy, Tony Eaton, like he does, he goes on like, these bike rides and so he got me really into biking the summer um and i think that really helped me see like what brooklyn was really about um so like when you bike through brooklyn like you see like these people like talking on brownstones like you see like these parks with like cages on them with like the chain nets like that's you don't have that in like phoenix arizona you know like a lot of that is a lot of the basketball that's being played out there is in like gyms like it's too hot out so like nobody plays outside um it's the music like in Phoenix, it's it's a different music vibe than anywhere else. Like I'm from the West Coast, right? So like a lot of things we listen to is not like what people here in Brooklyn listen to. Like, um, like I guess like for picking the open video songs, like I w I know I wanted something like Jay Z and like something that like when I, like I said when you walk in like you look like you watch the video, you hear the song, you're like, oh wow, like that's Brooklyn. Um, so I, I think a big part of it is just like exploring like the area that you're in, um, because like without those bike rides in the summer, like I wouldn't really get to see like what real Brooklyn is. Um, and a lot of the people, like the way they talk, like the way they interact, like a lot of that is just different from like what I grew up with. Like I grew up in Arizona, like for 20 years of my life. So just like being able to really understand like the area that you're in, like really helps you like with the creativity that in the place that you're in now, like I wouldn't be able to, like everything I do now, like every video that I do, like, I guess like minus the hype edits and things like that, like, I try to really reflect like the area that I'm in so that when people watch this, they're like, Oh wow. That's like Brooklyn. Like you can't do that like anywhere else. Yeah, for sure. Well, and, and like, it's like sports fans are proud to be fans of their team, you know, whether you're from yeah. Brooklyn or like me, like I, I didn't have an NBA team when I grew up in Pittsburgh. Like we obviously still don't have an NBA team, but like when I got to Phoenix and it was like the bubble and everything, it was just like, I have to be a part of this. Like I, this is something that just yeah. like means so much to me. So it was cool to see like Phoenix reflected in what they do. And then same thing. Like I've always loved the Nets and like, even before, you know, Mikhail and, and Cam Johnson got there, but like, it's like their and your guys vibe is like, it's so authentically Brooklyn. And it's like, and that's something, I mean, obviously like being a Pittsburgher and like, Pittsburgh people are proud of their city. It's like, it's so cool to see that being reflected because it's like, you know, authenticity is like one of those buzzwords that everyone uses now, but it's so like, it's so much more than just a buzzword as cheesy as that sounds. Like it's, if you are not authentically 
Brooklyn and connecting with that fan base and with that, you know, that part of the city, it's like, it's just, it's not going to eat no matter how good the video is and no matter how well thought out and planned it is, it's like, it's still not going to hit that same way. Right. Right. Like looking at like when you post your product on Instagram and things like that, like for me, like I'm not really looking at like the likes count or anything like that. Like the one thing I really enjoy is looking like at the comments and it's like those Brooklyn fans saying like, Oh wow. Like this is so Brooklyn. Like I really enjoyed this. Like those are the comments to me that like knowing like, Oh wow. Like I feel like I did my job in a sense because like that's something that you can't get anywhere else. Like that's something that I created and I, or I helped create that really like reflected the area that I'm in. Yeah. And and it's, it, it's the ultimate compliment, right? Like we did 100%. shout out to, to Sterling McLean on, on uh, leading our content team, but he like, when we were thinking of kind of our opening day video talked about like Andrew McCutcheon voicing it over, like, like he worked to get a Mac Miller song released and like everything about it, like the shots, the script, everything that he did, it was like me being a, you know, a Yinzer from Pittsburgh. Like it just like, it, it hit every feel that there was. And it's like, and then you see all those comments of like, like, this is Pittsburgh. Like this is, you know, mm -hmm. you guys nailed it. That, and it's like, that's that, like everything that you're trying to do, like that's, that's the goal. For sure. Yep.